On today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Tio de Mister resurfaced and he's selling some of his bitcoins. Dash is the privacy-focused digital currency that offers transactions with instant confirmations. Its unique decentralized decision-making and self-funding system make it an ideal choice as a stable and secure digital cash. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news. Today we turn to my inbox for the news. My old mate, Tio de Mister from Adamant Research, sent out an email to his subscribers last night at 11.30pm GMT, and that pretty much decided what I was going to cover today on the Cryptoverse. So first, let's have a look at what he's got to say in this email, and then I'll show you how accurate his previous prediction was, because I previously covered another article of his a couple of months ago on the Cryptoverse and then we'll take a look at what he predicted and then what the results were. So you can see here this email, the uh, subject line is Bitcoin, possible price resistance, I'm taking some profit. So I've highlighted this first bit that says the Bitcoin price has more than doubled since I first published the report how to position for the rally in Bitcoin a little over a year ago. So that's Tio de Mister saying that. He says, I think there is a lot of potential left on the upside but nothing goes up in a straight line, and we are faced with a potential price resistance zone at $700 to $800. Now, do I agree with him on this? Yes, but I'll be more specific. I'll flick over to my Bitcoin price chart here, and I will say that the resistance is $780 to $800 area. That's the area that we need to break through. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you will see this black line here at the top of my screen. That is the $778 mark. So let's call it 780. So that is a definitive point of resistance on my chart. And then I say 800 because that's a psychologically significant number. Now I'm basing this on my Fibonacci retracement lines, which if you again, if you're watching this, they're the horizontal black lines that go across my screen from left to right. And you'll also see that three days ago, if I move back here, three days ago, we hit our head on the ceiling, which was $778. And that coincides with, when was the last time we hit that? It was back in uh, June time, the 18th of June, we, we hit our head on the same price. Right, I'm not going to go into how to analyze charts or draw Fibonacci retracement lines right now. So let's get back to two of Mr's email. So later on, he goes on to say, since the price went above $700, I've been selling some of my Bitcoins, uh, some even more today, locking in profit as well as giving me some more ammunition to buy back in if the price drops. Right, key point here if you're not familiar with how to trade Bitcoin. This is how you start off with a small amount of money and then continually increase it over time. If Tio sells a Bitcoin for, say, $700, that doesn't mean he's done, right? It's not like selling a laptop where it's a one-way transaction. So that $700 will sit on the sidelines waiting for the price to go down to say $600 and then he'll buy back in. Only this time when he buys back in, he'll end up with 1.16 Bitcoins and he hasn't actually had to put any more of his own money in. So you can see how repeating that process means you could start off with one Bitcoin and end up with a lot more over time. Uh, that is if you have the patience to, you know, sell when a price hits a high and then buy it when it dips. So moving on then, he says, that being said, the cup and handle pattern is a huge deal in my view. And if we break, break out of it, they could catapult the price well over the previous all time highs, perhaps to $1,600 in short order. Now this does agree with my analysis. It's just that him and I have come to similar conclusions by approaching it from different perspectives. See, that's the thing. There's no one one way to read a chart like this. And then as we scroll down, you see here, Tio has he's drawn his cup and handle pattern on the chart itself. Again, if you're not familiar with trading, we have all these funny names for the patterns. 
and cup and handle because it, that's what it looks like. If you watch the YouTube version of this, you'll see this drawing on there. Later on, he says that Bitcoin has matured from a tiny startup currency to the equivalent of a mid cap S&P 400 stock, making explosive price movements a bit less likely. And currently we're also facing some scaling bottlenecks. Now I agree with this and it's one of the reasons why Bitcoin is becoming an ever stronger store of value is because it's taking bigger and bigger whales buying in to Bitcoin or selling out to make the price move. So the whole thing about the mainstream media bashing Bitcoin because oh it's too volatile. Well of course it is because it was it was so young but as it ages they're not going to be able to use that anymore as a reason not to get into it. So Tio goes on to talk about how scaling and the increasing fees uh, on the network. That's something I talked about recently in the context of establishing a working Bitcoin economy in India. But then in the blue bit here, towards the end, he says, nonetheless, the hurdles towards secure, decentralized scalability are real in my view and could depress investors' sentiment somewhat in the coming weeks and months. Now, when I spoke about Bitcoin transaction fees being too high for use in India, Someone in the comments pointed out that there's an option to switch to an altcoin and then bypass the problem because the altcoins, their networks have got plenty of spare capacity. Now I thought about this and I thought, mm, I thought about people who say that they exchange their Bitcoin for Litecoin, do a transaction and then convert it back to Bitcoin at the other end. And when I first heard about that, I accepted that as a viable thing to do. But to my mind now, I'm thinking, well, there's a cost to that in terms of having to pay two exchange fees to do the conversion, plus the transaction fee itself. So once when I convert my Bitcoin to Litecoin, there's a there's a exchange fee there. Then I have to pay the Litecoin transaction fee on the Litecoin network. Then the other person at the other end or I have to pay the exchange fee to turn the Litecoin back into Bitcoin. Now I haven't run the exact numbers, but intuitively I just don't think that that makes sense. So. Like I said at the beginning, let's close by revisiting a previous article from Adamant Research that I covered previously. So on the 7th of October 2016, I published episode 117 of the Cryptoverse, commenting on this article from Teodemista called Why I'm Short Ethereum and Long Bitcoin. Now I covered that because I knew that would be controversial. <laughs> you know, there's the two camps in crypto, uh, Ethereum versus Bitcoin, as if they're somehow rivals. And now it's ironic that I received an update from Tio de Mister yesterday, because if we look at coin market cap today, this is exactly two calendar months later. It's two calendar months after he originally published that prediction, if you like. And Bitcoin has been continually climbing, while Ethereum core has been kind of like trying to climb a fireman's pole covered in grease. Ethereum core is now down to a market cap of 542 million. An Ethereum core token is worth $6.26 today, actually. In the last 24 hours, it's dropped 15%, which is unusually uh, steep. And then if I actually click on the graph and look at the last three months, you'll see that since like mid-September, there's been this gradual erosion of the price. So if you've not seen that episode of the Cryptoverse and read the article from Tio de Mister from the 7th of October, I do recommend you go back and read that because it might give you some explanation as to how this came about. So I don't mean to brown nose to de Mister, but he did call it. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From as little as $10 a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That's all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now. <laughs>